In this first video, we're going to create the customer table. I'm going to choose all programs and go look for Microsoft Office and choose Access 2013. The first thing I'm going to do is start a blank database. So I'll click here on the database icon for blank. Access forces you to save your file before you begin anything else. And so we need to give it a file name and location. I'm going to call mine Sluter Store. You can name yours something similar. Choose the folder, pick a location, and click OK. Click the Create button. The most basic building block for any Access database is the table. And you notice here that we have something called Table 1 already created. And it's asking for us to add some information. Access assumes that we're just going to start typing in some data. I'm going to actually change this by right-clicking on the title Table 1 and choosing Design View. Table 1 needs a name. I'm going to call this Customer Table. And so this is basically a spreadsheet that's going to hold all of the names of our customers. The first field name of a table usually is something called ID. In this case, I'm going to call it Customer ID. And notice it is an auto number. So each number will be assigned automatically to our customers as we enter them. Let's click on the next line down. Since we're collecting data about our customers, we're going to collect their name and their address and some things about their business relationship with us. So I'll start by naming something called last name. Notice how you don't use any spaces in here. A short text is a good type for a name. It's only 255 letters long, as you can see down here, which is enough for most names. So let's put in our first name. Also, we'll choose short text. Let's do street address. Once more, we can use short text. What other kind of information do you store in your customer table? Things like their city and their state. So city and state. These are all short text. Let's go to zip code. For zip code, you might be tempted to choose number, but we're going to leave it as text in case they live in a foreign country or else we have leading zeros in our zip code. Let's explore some of the other types, though, that are here. There is a type called time and date. Let's choose this one. Let's call it customer since. And so Customer since is going to be the day when they became our customer. Another format that we see is a yes-no format. We could call this free shipping customer or free shipping status. And so if we check that box, it means they are going to get free shipping from us. I'm going to right-click now on the customer tab up at the top. Push save. Right-click again. And I'm going to choose data sheet view. Now you'll see that this looks something like a spreadsheet now. I can start entering information in here. So the last name, I just type in Smith, and I type in any type of name. Let's go with the address, 123 Main Street, and the city, let's say Phoenix and Arizona, and the zip code is 85087. And what is this one? Customer since. Now, when we want to enter a date here, there is a date picker icon here. If you click this, you can choose a date when this became a customer. And so we have 2.15. Let's scroll a little bit further to the right. We have the option to either check for free shipping or no. This is their free shipping status. So let's give this person free shipping. Now you can see why this is called the data table view because we're creating a table of data. Now I've finished typing in about 15 names. So I have their name and their address, their city, state, zip, when they became a customer, and some of these I've chosen to be part of the free shipping club and some I've left alone. Now you can sort your database here. If you click on the words last name, you can tell it to sort from A to Z, or you can sort it in reverse order. So you can sort any of these by their city, by their state, by their alphabetized, or when they were joined to the company. And so sorting is one thing that you can do in a table. Let's save the table, so right click on the tab and choose save. 
Now let's right click and close it. If we were to go and double click the table, we can open it again. We can enter more data if we want. We can change data, we can delete data. For instance, if we want to delete this person here, I could right click on the front of the row and there is an item for delete record. It says you won't be able to undo this information, so are you sure? Click yes. Now if I sort by the ID number, you will notice that it skipped it. One, three, four, five, and so ID numbers are never replaced. They are always one bigger than the last. So they will never be another ID for person two. Let's close this and save the changes. One other way to enter a data is to create a form. I'm going to click on the customer table up to the create menu and click here where it says form. This will create a form automatically that includes all of the data that I've entered already. Let's save this form and we'll call it customer form. So I'm going to rename it. Click OK. Down at the bottom it shows that I'm viewing the records in sequence from number 1 through 14. So as I click these arrows, the forward and the back arrow, I browse before and after through my customers. When I reach the end I come to customer 14 and now when I try to create a new one, the 15th customer, it's asking me to enter new data. So I can enter data here. I have to go to the right click on the tab and choose form view. Then I'm allowed to create a new customer. So once I've entered all the information, I click another next record and a new one comes up. Now if I go and close this form and now I reopen the table, by double clicking you will see that I have the new person in the list. So in most programs you want to have users enter data in through forms and so that's what forms are created for. You can also modify how your form is designed. If you right click and choose layout view it allows you to adjust the width of each column. You could also right click and choose design view. Inside design view you can change the format, you can change the size of things but you can also adjust how things are formatted. So for instance, down here in this field called Customer Since, I can come over to the right side here and choose a different format for my words. I can choose things like medium date or long date. Let's try what medium date looks like. And then when I do Form View, you see the medium date now shows the abbreviation for the month. Inside here you can also adjust things like the the text alignment so instead of being left aligned you can center it you can change the font size if you want to have larger letters you can change the colors you can change the font name so all of the different things that you're accustomed to seeing on most word processors you can change in these fields lastly I'm going to close this save the changes and there you have the first lesson on creating customer data in your database